News Watch at 5.30 continues, and we are inside the Hastings County Museum of Agricultural Heritage. News Watch at 5.30 has never been here before. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to today. Uh, Ron, uh, how, how did this museum come to be? Well, 1986, when the International Plow Match was here just uh, north of Sterling, uh, they had this dream that they'd like to do this, and they thought, you know, if we can put a show on like this for a week, well, why couldn't we put it on forever? But it took ah. 10 years after that before we could realize the dream, start to realize the dream. So we started to build, and uh, we had no money, but the Friendly Bank of Montreal and Sterling, they uh, lent us $25,000, which we never actually did use because the people of this area, they really wanted to see this happen. So the money was in the bank before we built our first building. Oh, my goodness. And uh, from, from you know, small beginnings until now, uh, now there's over 38,000 square feet of museum under roof. And by next summer, over 40,000 square feet of museum under roof. So yeah, we've come from a, a small beginning to a large ending. Um, the value of what we've got into this museum, which was mostly donated by people from this area that wanted to see this happen wow. uh, is about a million dollars. But the value of this museum today, in today's dollars, is four and a half million dollars. It's all paid for, we have no debts, and uh, very, very little help from provincial or federal governments, mostly from the people of Hastings County, Northumberland County, Prince Edward County, the, the local counties. Oh my goodness, what a sense of pride in from so many different areas. Yes. Uh, there are plenty, I, I, we will start looking at some specific items in a moment. I know people's eyes are watching through Kevin's work and they're saying, oh, what's that? What are they, what are they? But one of the things that caught my attention already was the map of the dairies of this community. I didn't realize um, how rich the dairy uh, industry was at very, one time. Yeah, very, uh, like in, the, in this local area here in Rodden Township, uh, where we are right now, um, in 1900, the turn of the last entry, there was 14 concession, of course, and there was 14 cheese factories there. Uh, in central Ontario here, uh, there was 273 cheese factories My in goodness. 1928. And just to give you an idea, Prince Edward County had 28 cheese factories in 1928. Uh, so it was very, very important to this area. Matter of fact, you could hardly talk to anybody in this area that had, did not have a connection with somebody that was involved in cheese making or butter making or in the dairy industry. That's why this museum here is so important because we were trying to preserve that heritage for the next generation to understand what their grandfather or great-grandfather did, and their grandmother for that matter. And how they've built this uh, region to be what it is today. That's right. Yeah. Well, the tour continues. Uh, Ron, I am looking forward to uh, seeing some more of the spots. Now, I understand it takes how long for a guided tour? About an hour and 45 minutes. So we're going to have to fast good. forward and give some of the highlights, but we'll remind people to come and visit on their own. Yeah, that's good. All Thank right. you. More from the museum coming up, and this is also ahead on News Watch at 530. News Watch at 53 continues in Sterling at the Hastings County Museum of Agricultural Heritage. This is one of how many buildings on the property? Well, we have seven buildings here and building another one now, so eight. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to sit back and let you tell us the story about the tractor collection. Well, <clears throat> this all come about uh, a few years ago when we formed a tractor club here. And now the tractor, cl uh, tractor club is uh, 107 members. And uh, amongst them 107 members, there's they own over 300 tractors. So we have no shortage of tractors here, and we keep normally 40 here at any given time. But I guess we go back to 2008 when Sterling celebrated their 150th anniversary, and we had That's the greatest hard. tractor parade of the world in the world. So uh, we got the Guinness Book of Records for the, the largest tractor parade. We had 602 tractors that went through Sterling, took about two hours to pass oh any given goodness. point, and uh, 601 made it. One tractor didn't make it, and the Guinness <laughs> Book of Records wouldn't allow that one tractor, but we had <laughs> 601 tractors. And this place was empty because we were all down at the parade. That's amazing. This is, oh my gosh, there are so many great stories, and I know that you, you know many of them. Uh, I find it hard to believe that, that people are actually able to till some of the land in some of these tractors. They're so heavy, the tires are so big, they're made of steel. It must have been such a challenge. I'm sure it was. And uh, you know, actually, some of the tractors you see here now are probably in better shape now than they were when they were bought <laughs> brand new. Because these people that own them, they like to keep them clean and, and uh, painted up and, and running well. All right. Well, we're going to try and hit another, at least another one or building or two. Where are we off to now? I think we'll go to the tillage building. Okay, the tillage building.
when I think of the tillage equipment and plowing equipment, I automatically think of, of horses. But of course, we have a number of items here that remind you this. A lot of this was done by hand at one time. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a, a lot of it done by hand, and uh, this does show uh, a, a lot of the different things they used to till the soils uh, here in the county. Um, this this all come about with the help of the uh, Hastings County Plowmen's Association here in the county, and uh, they helped to put this uh, building together first. And uh, so now we maintain it, but they uh, were really responsible for making this work in you, this building. You now you were telling me that um, you, you quite enjoy when you see, uh, you know, blended generations come together to a museum like this, and you actually step out of the role of tour guide, and, and grandparents are able to lead uh, yes. the lecture for their, or, their, or the discussion for their, for their grandchildren. That, that gives us some joy here because I, I, cause you see the, the expression in the grandchildren's eyes and, and thinking, well, that grandfather or grandfather really knows a lot, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and they do. And, uh, but it's important that they tell the story, that it's passed down to the next generation. And uh, we get a lot of, lot of joy out of that. Well, we'll have more from the Hastings County Museum of Agricultural Heritage in a moment. Right now, we're going to check in with Graham Hart. Graham Hart, uh, Ron, is our resident grammar guru, and he passes on all kinds of great information when it comes to using the English language. And he caught up with Megan Roy to discuss the that and the which, and we'll get it all straightened out now. This is a cool little gadget. Sure is. Yeah, well, that's uh, our handhelds, and uh, when we have people come through here, maybe like a family, they uh, will pick up their handhelds and uh, tell stories all the way through the uh, museum. There's right. little numbers here. Uh, this one here is thrashing machine number 61, and uh, it'll tell a little story. And will it just start by itself? Oh, I think you did. Where's my microphone here? Right here. Going? Yeah. Woo there's, there's a fire in town. <laughs> Look, at, that's great. Where did the bell come from? That come from the uh, Sterling Fire Department. It was here originally. It did really? And back in the 1800s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's how they called everybody out for a fire. I guess. Well, yeah. it wouldn't be hard to yeah. hear that. News Watch at 530 continues at the Hastings County Ag Museum, as we call it casually. And uh, this is a really, uh, it's a fascinating yeah, this building, building. building here is our pride and joy. Uh, this is where we hold a lot of our events. Um, we have weddings here. We have seminars here. We have 50th wedding anniversaries here. I've been here just about a month ago for 800 people. Uh, oh. And we fed everybody here in about four hours. And uh, we've had weddings here for up to 250 people. And it is a rental facility so that we can rent, the, rent this facility out if anybody would like to rent it. Well, why did you decide that you would like to do um, a streetscape uh, along with the uh, Agricultural Museum and, and all of the, the other items that you were putting together here? Well, I, I think uh, one of the main reasons was, was, was revenue. Uh, was a, it's a revenue producing uh, oh. for us, so that it's going to help pay our bills And because uh, so, we are being very successful at renting it out. Matter of fact, very little advertising, but have one wedding and we have another wedding and uh, one sells the other. So. So who kind of comes together to create a streetscape like this? You have a saloon and a doctor's office and a, and a pharmacist. How, how does a, an organization like yours put something like this together? Well, just uh, sit down and start planning. Uh, <laughs> we, we got this idea actually in uh, Saskatchewan, in uh, Saskatoon. There's one some, similar to this and uh, had some pictures of that, and we decided we could do it too. So that's... Uh, that's how we got started about four years ago. Now, are the buildings here, or the storefronts, or even the characters, are they are they modeled after uh, shops or, or locations uh, well, within the county? Well, yeah, it, it, but the whole building is generic. Okay. So uh, we tried to fashion from buildings in Hastings County, but we didn't want to pick out anybody in particular. Although some of these buildings have been built by uh, corporations and individuals, but it's just mentioned in a small plaque at the site, but we didn't want to name them buildings after them people because we didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know what? Every every shop on the street is like its own little museum. I was looking at the at the all of the equipment you have in the print shop and I was looking at the jewelry in the jewelry store. Every one of these has more things to see inside. Yes, it does. Uh, you're going to play the pump organ for us? We could give you a little 
Just Give a it a little, little girl. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll say goodbye just for a minute. Uh, this has been lovely. I Thank can't you. wait to come back. Yeah, Newswatch at 530 is finished. Coming up next, Newswatch at 6. But first, Ron on the pump organ at Sterling Agriculture Museum. Hit it, Ron! Okay.